Hello, YouTube. He's family friendly, work friendly, and just an overall great guy. Yes, I am. He's not afraid to speak his mind nope. and will provide you with that extra burst to make it through your work day. Damn straight. Welcome to the Afternoon Show with Taylor King on the X. Real Rock Variety. Thanks, guys. It is the Afternoon Show blog. This time for October 4th, 2010. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to go over what happened on the Afternoon Show this uh, past afternoon. Day in Rock Report. This day in Rock and Roll History. Music news, sports, celebrity sleaze, news of the weird, and dumb crooks. So what do you say we get right to it? And yes, it is in that order. With the Day in Rock Report from Antimusic.com, today's quick roundup of the top rock news stories from across the web. Keeping you up to date on what your favorite or maybe not so favorite artists are doing, it's the Day in Rock Report. Do it live! With Taylor King on the X. Take it away. Two Metallica fans scaled the fence around an arena and impersonated staff in a bid to meet their heavy metal idols in Christchurch, reports Stuff.co.nz. In the Christchurch District Court yesterday, student Christopher John Sage admitted pulling the stunt. Pop Eater asked Motley Crue frontman Vince Neil about some negative things he wrote about his bandmates in his new book. Pop Eater asked, You wrote that you dread when one of them calls because there's always an ulterior motive. Neil responded, yeah, for a while there was always an ulterior motive for everything that was done, and I still think that way. When decisions are made about something, I always try to figure out the angle. I don't completely trust them, but I don't think they completely trust me either. It's a two-way street. That's the way things have evolved. That's with all Motley business, not just the band. He wasn't all negative towards his bandmates, however. Poison singer Brett Michaels is scheduled to appear on the Ellen DeGeneres show on Wednesday, October 13th. And that is the very short day in rock report. Time now for this day in rock and roll history, and born on this day, Steve Miller is 67, Brian Johnson of ACDC is 63, Brian Connolly of Sweet would have been 61, Lee Thompson of Madness is 53. Well, what happened on this day? Well, in 1962, the Beatles' debut single, Love Me Do, was released in the UK. It spent 26 weeks on the chart, peaking at number four. In 1963, the Rolling Stones played two shows at the Galmont Theatre in Watford, England. In 1966, Jimi Hendrix, Mitch Mitchell, and Noel Redding played together for the first time, and the Jimi Hendrix experience was formed. In 1967, The Doors played the final night of a five-night run at Steve Paul's scene in New York City. In 1974, The Beach Boys went to number one on the U.S. album chart with Endless Summer, the group's second U.S. number one. In 1975, Stevie Wonder appeared at the Wonder Dream concert in Kingston, Jamaica, a Jamaican Institute for the Blind Benefit concert. Along with Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, and Bunny Whaler, the three original Whalers performing together for the last time. In 1980, UK Music Weekly, the NME, had Joy Division's She's Lost Control as single of the week. In 1991, Brian Adams scored his first UK number one album with Waking Up the Neighbors. Also in 1991, Guns N' Roses started a two week run at number one on the US album chart with Use Your Illusion 2. In 1999, Roger Daltrey announced that The Who were reforming, make, uh, making their first performance in Las Vegas on October 29th. The show was also to be broadcast live on the internet. And in 2000, UK TV show Top of the Pops issued a top 40 chart based on singles that spent the longest time on the UK chart. Number three was My Way by Frank Sinatra, number two, She Loves You by The Beatles, and number one, Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. And that is this day in rock and roll history and birthdays. All right, now it is time for sports. And the New England Patriots steamrolled the Miami Dolphins 41-14 in Monday Night Football last night in Miami, with the Pats special team scoring most of New England's points. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady threw for only 153 yards, while Patrick Chung blocked two kicks and returned an interception for a touchdown, and New England scored twice on special teams. Miami's QB Chad Henney was 29 of 39 for 302 yards and two touchdowns, but he tied a career-high three interceptions. Europe held off America's near comeback on Monday to win golf's Ryder Cup at Celtic Manor in Wales. Northern Ireland's Graeme McDowell got the winning point on the 17th hole in the final singles match to secure the one-point victory for Europe over America, 14.5 points to 13.5. The Americans have fought back after starting the day down three points following a dismal performance on Sunday, but in the end, they fell just short of a stellar comeback win. And that is sports. Time more, uh, time now for Celebrity Sleaze. Yeah, more stuff coming up. All right, here we go. Susan Boyle has canceled her scheduled uh, appearance on Dancing with the Stars tonight. She was expected to tape a performance of the Leonard Cohen song, Hallelujah, to accompany pro dancers Jonathan Roberts and Anna 
Trebunskaya. I don't watch the show, so I don't know. But ABC announced that a throat infection forced her to stay home in Scotland. And it's worth noting that I am uh, recording this right now as that is airing. And no, I'm not watching it. Be a dropout like me and still make a billion. That's the advice Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg gave Lisa Simpson in a voice cameo on the Fox series The Simpsons on Sunday night. In classic Simpsons fashion, Lisa's respect for education is crushed when Zuckerberg tells her that he's a Harvard dropout, and so are fellow billionaires Bill Gates and Richard Branson. The appearance is counter-programming of a sort for Zuckerberg, who is portrayed as a cold-eyed opportunist in the new movie The Social Network. Real Housewives of New Jersey star Danielle Staub and her ex-husband have settled his case against her for defamation, according to TMZ.com. Details of the out-of-court agreement were not released, but TMZ reports that cash was involved in the deal. Kevin Marr sued his ex-wife for $5 million for defamation of character, claiming she spread vicious lies about him to various news organizations and individuals. The curse of Dancing with the Stars has struck again. Adriana Partridge apparently twisted an ankle during a rehearsal for the show, and on-set physicians rushed to her aid. The injury apparently was minor, and the show will go on. Mel Gibson's ex-girlfriend Oksana Grigorvia is in talks to sit down with Oprah Winfrey for an exclusive interview. But if you haven't had enough of this sad saga yet, watch out. Oksana reportedly agreed to be interviewed only if Oprah allows her to sing on air. During their relationship, Mel tried to help Oksana launch his singing career, but after their breakup, he shipped tons of her unsold CDs back to her house. That according to TMZ. Survivor Africa winner Ethan Zahn and Bachelorette star Ryan Sutter are good pals, but they're racing against each other in the New York Marathon next month. Their participation in the November 7th Marathon will raise cash and awareness for charitable organizations. Zahn supports grassroots soccer, which helps kids in Africa. Sutter competes on behalf of First Descents, an adventure program for young adults with cancer. It seems scary, but there is no challenge too big for us, Zahn told People.com. Zahn was recently successfully treated for Hodgkin's lymphoma and is in remission. And finally today, daughter Jamie Lee Curtis and a crowd of celebrities, including California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, attended the funeral of Tony Curtis yesterday in Las Vegas. Curtis was buried with some of his favorite possessions, including a Stetson hat, an Armani scarf, driving gloves, an iPhone, and a copy of his favorite novel, Anthony Adverse. Curtis died Wednesday at age 85. And that is Celebrity Sleaze. Time now for music news and part one. Today marks the day of a massive reissue campaign in celebration of what would have been John Lennon's 70th birthday on October 9th. Yoko Ono and Capitol Records have issu or reissued newly remastered versions of Lennon's solo albums, including John Lennon, Plastic Ono Band, Imagine, Sometime in New York City, Mind Games, Walls and Bridges, Rock and Roll, Double Fantasy, and Milk and Honey. The new catalog discs differ sonically from the Lennon CDs currently on the market, which were slightly remixed to Yoko's specifications. Yoko says that even on lesser efforts like Lennon's 1975 covers collection Rock and Roll, his genius still shines through loud and clear. Well, you know, rock and roll, I mean, that was pretty good. I mean, that just kind of showed his roots, his musical roots. You know, it's not like just uh, somebody suddenly wanted to be a rocker and, and came and did, did something. I mean, he had the roots, he had the training and he had the love for that person and he sang so well. The John Lennon box of vision contains the LP artwork book, 166 pages of newly restored LP art in original LP size, including the complete artwork for John and Yoko's wedding album, formatted for the first time in book form, the complete calendar artwork for live piece in Toronto in 1969, all of Lennon's studio albums from 1970's John Lennon Plastic Ono Band through 1984's Milk and Honey, plus all officially released worldwide compilations and live albums originally issued in the LP format. Also, the Catalography Book, a brand new full-color uh, full, full discography of Lennon's album catalog with an exclusive essay and textual guide by noted author Bruce Spicer. Newly restored reproductions of classic Lennon album advertisements, Lennon's handwritten sound notes to 1980's Double Fantasy, and more. The CD Storage Book, the patented Box of Vision CD storage system built to store all of John Lennon's official CD releases, uh, releases can hold up to 32 different CD albums in an expandable and adaptable format to accommodate any fan's collection. Note the actual CDs are not included. And exclusive recordable discs. 
one Art Adorned recordable DVD, and three different Art Adorned recordable CDs intended for fans to record and store audiovisual and audio content of their choosing. The Lennon Estate is granted permission to create these unique CDs using classic John and Yoko art elements as well as Lennon's drawings. Fans can create their own time capsule content to store in their box of vision. And in celebration of what would have been John Lennon's 70th birthday on October 9th, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum, Yoko Ono, and Box of Vision will be planting three separate Lennon time capsules. One of the capsules will be planted at the Rock Hall in Cleveland, another at Liverpool's John Moores University, which will store one in the archives of their School of Art and Design, which Lennon and Stuart Sutcliffe attended when it was known as the Liverpool College of Art, with the third time capsule being planted in uh, Iceland. No, I'm not going to even attempt where that uh, the city is. Near the John Lennon Peace Tower. The capsules are scheduled to be open on October 9, 2040. The time capsule dedication ceremony at the Rock Hall will take place on October 8th at 10.30 a.m. and will kick off a weekend filled with various Lennon retrospectives.